Good evening, guys. My name is Aaron Kern, and I am your obligatory gay character for this video. Please do enjoy my gayness and nothing else to do with my personality. Welcome and enjoy. If you're gay, then you're gay. Don't pretend that you're straight. You could be who you are any day of the week. You are unlike the others, so strong and unique. We're all with you. What's up, guys, and welcome to another video where I basically ramble about shit that bothers me. Sorry there wasn't a video last week, I had the cold. If any of you have sharp ears, you can hear that my nose is still blocked up, but I can talk well enough that I decided that I would make a video. So, if you didn't get from the intro, we're going to be talking about gayness th this video. Yay! Who doesn't love a good gay? Oh, uh, apparently a lot of people, but not the discussion for today. What I want to talk about today is why media can't really seem to grasp how to properly portray gay people on TV, or even in books and music and other pieces of media. A lot of people are probably thinking that I'm probably going to dive into this and say about how there's not enough gay characters on the TV, and how we need to have loads of them, and how they need to basically overcome every television program and just get rid of all the straight people and just replace them all with gays. And if that's what you're expecting, then that's not what you're going to find. The problem I have with gay people being portrayed in media is that no one can seem to be able to grasp how to portray them properly. And I'm not saying that whatever's going on is homophobic. In fact, it's the complete opposite of homophobia. What I have a problem with is not to do with the fact that people are portraying gay people in an offensive way, or they're doing it wrong, or they're purposely villainizing them, or making them seem bad. The problem that I have is that gay characters they seem to be gay and have nothing else going for them. Let's go back a bit. About, let's say a decade ago. A decade ago you would not have seen as many gay characters on TV that you would see now. That is a fact. You you might see the odd show about gay people or the odd gay character. And this is a problem that people still like to pretend is going on now. But <laughs> it's not. But we won't get into that. Basically, you wouldn't see that many LGBT characters on TV, in books, on media, etc, etc. And it seems that people have taken the reverse of that nowadays. And if a movie or a TV show is coming out, it will be blasted from the rooftops that there will be a gay character. The, every interview with said actor will be about their gay character. Everyone will be discussing the gayness. Nothing else, not the personality, not the plot, not what's going to go on in the show. It'll be about how gay this person is. And why? <laughs> For one thing, you don't get that with straight people. You don't talk constantly about how this character is straight and how the straightness is revolutionary and how you don't see that many straight characters on TV because straight people didn't have the really that problem when it came to being represented on television. And I get it, people had an issue, the fact that gay people weren't on TV properly for a very long time. But the problem is, is that we're we're supposed to be trying to normalise it. We want to make our, our LGBT characters, we want to have them on TV as commonly as straight characters. We want it to be as normal as having straight characters on the television. We want to be able to have a gay character on a TV show and for it not to be talked about, for it to be so normal and so used to that no one even bats an eyelash. Like, all this stuff where people make a big deal out about a character being LGBT is the exact opposite of what we should be trying to do in having LGBT characters on TV. As I said, we're supposed to be normalising it, but there's nothing normal about having all the promotion being about the gay character. Anyone who watches my channel knows I love Doctor Who, but I've gone off it a bit in the final few years, probably since about 2013, ever since Clara came in, I have not really been into Doctor Who that much. But everyone knows I have an opinion on the female Doctor thing, but that is not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about Bill Potts. Bill Potts was the, the previous companion of Doctor Who, as you, as anyone who doesn't know about Doctor Who doesn't know, the Doctor always has a companion of some sort, most commonly female, to someone who is basically 
like the viewer. It's someone to explain things to and someone to have go on the adventures with them. Someone that has enough personality to stand on their own as a character, but for the audience to feel like they're there too. And they're a vessel of explanation, as I like to call them. Bill Potts was gay. And they did not fucking let you forget that. Oh my lord. I, I remember hearing, oh, there's going to be an LGBT character in Doctor Who. And I thought, well... Okay, there's been plenty of LGBT characters in Doctor Who. Does no one remember Captain Jack Harkness? Omnisexual, would fuck anything. Oh, alright. <laughs> but apparently this had never been done before. No gay characters in Doctor Who before until now. And um, fine, I was like, okay, we haven't had a lesbian on Doctor Who yet. As, as far as I can remember, we have had two females in an interspecies relationship, but we haven't had an actual human lesbian. So okay, let's see how they do it. They did it wrong. They did it so wrong. Every interview that they had with Pearl Mackey, who played Bill Potts, was either talking about how Bill was gay or how Bill was a gay person of colour. I did not get a single idea of what kind of person Bill was until I started watching the episodes. All they talked about was the fact that she liked women. All they talked about was the fact that they, they'd never had LGBT characters in Doctor Who before, which was a flat-out lie to begin with. And they they put all this promotion out as if they're expecting to be praised, as if everyone was going to go, oh my god, Doctor Who is so revolutionary, they have gay characters. But they didn't. When all these interviews were coming out, people were commenting saying, like, okay, we get that she's gay, but what does she like? What does she like? What does she not like? What does... What is her personality like? What does she do? Is she a student? Does she have a job? What What's her background like? You didn't know anything going into the new series of Doctor Who about this new companion, apart from the fact that she was a lesbian. And back in, back in like a decade ago, fine, that would have been, you know, whatever. But back a decade ago, they didn't know how gay people acted. They didn't know that gay people were basically just like straight people, except they were gay. We act like ordinary people. We are ordinary people. We're not any different. We, I don't feel the need to constantly talk about my sexuality when I'm asked to say a fun fact about myself. I don't feel the urge to go like, I'm Erin and I'm a lesbian. Must you know that I'm a lesbian? No, you must not. A lot of media don't seem to be able to know how to handle it, how to write it, and how to make it seem realistic. And those, a lot of people liked Bill as a companion, and fine, you know, I'm not going to try and change anyone's opinion, but it really began to rub me the wrong way when it was constantly shoved in your face that she was a lesbian. And I'm not saying this in a homophobic way, like, oh, the gay people, they were shoving it in our faces. Whoever was writing Doctor Who did not know how to write a proper lesbian, and this is coming from the point of view of someone who is a gay lesbian, or a lesbian. Gay lesbian. I, I just invented a new thing, gay lesbian, but... I am a lesbian myself, and I couldn't stomach Bill constantly being told she's gay, she's gay, she's gay. It's like, okay, 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 all right, we know. What else is there to her? Our sexuality does not define us. Our sexuality is not all we have to offer as people. There is more to us than just who we like and who we don't like. I mean, like, fuck, is that that hard to, like, comprehend? Is that... Uh, is that hard for writers to understand? Writers are supposed to be able to write complex characters with complex backstories and personalities, not just puppets with their sexuality written on their face. And you won't get that with straight characters. And I'm not pulling the homophobic card, but you don't get straight people constantly reminding you that they're straight or their entire character being that they are the straight character. Is this the case for all LGBT media? No. There are some good examples of ways to deal with sexuality properly. For example, the game The Last of Us. Um, I'm pretty sure you've heard of it, like The Last of Us. It was a very popular game back in 2013, was it? I can't remember what year it was. But it was basically about a zombie apocalypse. And there was this character called Bill in it. And Bill constantly referenced... Well, he didn't constantly reference, actually. It was actually really well done. He would every so often mention the fact that he had a partner. He had someone who was with him in the zombie apocalypse and who basically fucked off because they didn't get along anymore. They had an argument or something went awry and they parted ways. And spoilers if anyone's wanting to play the game, but you later find 
they later find Bill's partner has hung himself because he was bitten by the zombies and he didn't want to turn into a zombie. And you're basically given the impression, I was given the impression that there might have been more to this partnership, but it's not shoved in as much for it to be constantly about what is going on. There's a zombie apocalypse going on that is kind of more of a priority, and it is not confirmed that Bill is gay until... When, they're, when they've left and Ellie has stolen a couple of magazines from Bill's, <laughs> Bill's apartment and one of them is a gay porn magazine. And it's not even shoved in your face that it's a gay porn magazine. Like, she doesn't go, wow, gay porn! Like, she just, she makes a joke about it and talks about, wow, is it really that big? And why is the pages stuck together and stuff like that? That is how you properly insert someone's sexuality into a story. Because... You're in a zombie apocalypse. There was never going to be a point when Bill was going to walk up to them and go, I'm Bill, I'm gay, let's go fight some zombies. Because literally in the final episode with Bill in it and Doctor Who, she turns to the Doctor and says, you know the way I only date women? I shit you not. You know the way the only way I date women? And he was like, yeah. She's like, just making sure you remembered. What? What? I just... What? I just... I had no words. I had no words at all. I turned to my sister and said, Did she really just fucking say that? Another good example of... A gay character because I feel like I need to press the point that I feel like some people do know how to do it properly. Another good example is Alec Lightwood. You know I like Shadowhunters. Alec Lightwood and Magnus Bean, they, they, you get to know their characters and who they are as people. The fact that Alec would die for his family, that he's really protective, he's wary of Clary because she's new and he's worried she'll fuck things up and he wants to keep everyone he loves safe. He's a very protective person, he takes on the leadership role. We, and he's very closed off, and we know all this about him, and I don't think it's ever outwardly said. He doesn't come out and say, I'm gay. He kisses Magnus at a wedding, and it's never needed to be said, because unless there's a big coming out plot line, and for Alec it was a coming out plot line, but in more so a way that he was finally accepting that he loved, that not loved, not love yet, that he liked Magnus in that way. Unless there's this is a storyline about... Having to come out to your family and say, I'm gay, or I'm bi, or I'm pan, or whatever it is you want to say that you are. And then there's no need to properly outwardly say it. I never said it. I never said it. I swear to God. When, when my mum asked me if I was gay, I said, yeah. I never said I'm a lesbian. I say it a lot now. But I never felt the need. I don't feel the need when I meet new people to say, hi, I'm Erin. Must you know I'm gay? And I get the writers seem to feel the need to do this because they want to point out, look, we're being inclusive, we're writing more gay characters now. But it's kind of counterproductive to do that if you're not going to write them properly, if you're not going to write them as people, if you're not going to make them seem like normal characters acting the way normal people would. Like, you're just going to make gay, gay people seem like, you know... Crazy people who feel like they have to constantly remind you that they're gay and that there's the that you must know because it's imperative that you know. Media is supposed to reflect life, you know, real life or fictional situations and fictional worlds, but there's always supposed to be a ring of truth to them. And you can't write accurate gay people if you have to constantly bring up that they're gay because that's not how real life works, unless it's a coming out story. That's not how real life works. I remember I saw a comment once where someone said, I hope Magnus openly refers to the fact that he's bisexual and says it in words in the future in Shadowhunters. And I'm just like, why do you need that? Magnus has referenced multiple times that he is interested in men and women. In episode six of season one, he said, "I haven't felt like any. I haven't felt anything like this for anyone in, in over a hundred years, man or a woman." 
And he's meant he mentioned to Dot, I'm more of a one soul person. I'm more of a one soul at a time kind of person. Do you need spoon fed? Do you need more than that? People say, oh well, people like to see themselves represented on TV. You are. That is a realistic way of putting across your sexuality. Because you don't need to get a gramophone and go, I'm bi, didn't you know? Because he's referenced it. Man or woman. One soul at a time. How much more do you need than that? Like, it's not realistic. It's just not. We don't do that. At least I don't do that. I recently read a book that I finished just the other day that I got at W.H. Smith called The Swimming Pool Library. The Swimming Pool Library was written in 1980, in the 1980s, and it is about a gay man. A gay man who's given the job of looking through an old man's diaries on the possibility of maybe writing a book about it. And the whole point of the story is that the main character is supposed to realise that he is actually privileged in his life as a gay man. And compared to what the old man went through, because because the old man was gay as well. And the entire point of the story is this character realising that he has been all very privileged in the life that he has led. Even though he has been beaten up and he has gone through quite a lot of abuse because of his sexuality, he realises that compared to what this old man went through, this old man went to prison because he was gay, he realised that he is living a privileged life as a gay man. I cannot say something like that being popular these days. This book was written in the 1980s and it was critically acclaimed. It is a good book. A bit too much cock talk for me, but it was a good book. Um, I just... If anything like that came out nowadays, people don't like to sort of hear that maybe you might be living a bit of a better life than you might be letting on. Sure, there's a lot of trouble going on right now, but I, I honestly don't think the representation of characters in media is a thing of, of gay characters where we're slowly working towards having more and a lot of them are written still very badly but we're working on it there are more coming out <laughs> coming out <laughs> there are more in the works there don't even get me started on the kill your gays trope i should make a whole other video about that because honestly if i was like invincible because I was a lesbian. I'd be so fucking happy. I'd be jumping in front of cars just to test it out. Don't hit me, I'm a lesbian. You cannot kill me or you're homophobic. Like, ah! But no, I'm not gonna get into that in this video. What I'm trying to say is that something the media doesn't seem to understand is that all we want to see is gay characters written normally, like, acting like normal people, acting like the human beings that we are. Like, like, I just... No one goes, Hi, you must know I'm gay. You know the way I like girls? Just making sure you remember. Just in case you forget, I am gay. Have you ever seen all those articles that say, like, the newest Marvel movie has a gay character in it. The newest DC movie has a gay character in it. The newest whatever movie has a gay character and you're like, why are you making a big deal out of it? We're trying to normalize it. We're trying to make it become just as common and normal as having straight characters in media. You don't make a big hullabaloo about the straight characters, so don't make a big hullabaloo about the gay characters. I know we're fabulous, but <laughs> but honestly, it's, it's never going to get normalized if you are constantly bringing it up. And sadly, I don't think it's going to be a problem that's going to get solved anytime soon. But I don't know, it's just something I've noticed and I wanted to talk about it. And because I've still got a bit of a cold head, I feel like I didn't exactly get my feelings across properly. But I hope it was understandable at least. So, I'll see you next week guys. And remember, I don't bring up that I'm gay every five minutes. Don't know about you guys, but I don't. My name's Erin. Hi. Fun fact about me is that I'm allergic to nuts and I love peanut butter. I don't know. You get it.